We can teach skills that no other field can teach kids with autism. That we can teach kids to control themselves, to learn how to speak, to learn how to learn. These kids and their families deserve it. I was out of college in 1969. I was looking for something constructive and positive to do in the midst of all the grief that was going on in our country at the time with civil rights and racial issues and the war in Vietnam. I wanted to work with kids. That was a passion. That was something I could do well. I was offered a job at the Spalding Youth Center by a very charismatic executive director there named John Pangburn, who was putting in one of the first behavioral programs for emotionally disturbed kids in the country based on the principles of applied behavior analysis, ABA. He became one of my two partners in the summer of 1974 to try and start a school in Massachusetts. The methodology was really a way to teach teachers how to teach kids who are struggling to learn. The science is so powerful that it enabled us to take the center from an empty building on the grounds of the state hospital and a $30,000 grant to where it is today. One day in 1997, we had a call from it's Abu Dhabi, their like royal family or something, and we went and Googled Abu Dhabi and Googled them, and yes, indeed, they were members of the royal family of Abu Dhabi, which it turns out, you know, one of the wealthiest, most progressive cities in the Arab world. They had a son who was uh, three years old at the time, diagnosed in England with autism, and they had been told they needed to come to the United States. The family came out and we really hit it off. They liked the program that they saw. Eight weeks later, we were over there with $25,000 worth of preschool equipment, two teachers, a psychologist, and myself, and we set up many versions of our preschool in two of their palaces. And uh, we went to work and we transformed the life of that child. Today, he's finished his master's degree and is uh, socially and academically a, a real success story. The Crown Prince had done a series of deals and they wanted to do an autism project and they approached us to do it and they would wanted us to recreate everything. And they wanted only the architecture or design to, to be the difference between our program here and there. We sent a team of experienced New England Center professionals led by Dr. Dan Gould and now Dr. Pam Olson. And they've remained there since 2007. I remember working with so many families who were really, really struggling with the diagnosis of autism in their family and, and trying to figure out what to do. At the time, you wouldn't see anyone with special needs in the community. One of the most unique experiences for me being over here is to see that growth and that increase in awareness and to know that we're really responsible for that awareness. So if you ask anyone in the community, they know who we are and they know what we do. Quite honestly, it doesn't get any better than us. People were always willing to come to work for this cause and always believed in it and doing the really hard work of teaching these kids and going to school at the same time, all right here on, on site, and that those master's degrees, more than 1,500 of them in special ed and ABA, they are all over the world, and they're starting programs. Uh, that I'm incredibly inspired by and, and proud of. In Brazil, we have people living in areas that are so isolated, so little resources. And we started Grupo Método a few years after I came to Brazil. Autism Compassion Africa, which is a center that utilizes the science of applied behavior analysis. It's modeled after the day program at the New England Center, and we provide consulting services in schools and homes across Ghana and Nigeria, raising awareness of autism because there are a lot of human rights violations that can happen against this population. These children are human. These children deserve the right to life, to education, to being included in society. And we need to do what we can to help people see that these children can really go far in life. Ardo Skole is in many ways built on similar ideas as the New England Center. Children that have intensive need 
can always have services that they need in order to function, participate and learn. Currently, the challenge is we cannot serve all the children. So we are training up more people so we can provide more children the services that, that they greatly need. When you pursue something that's as positive and constructive as changing the lives of these kids and teaching them the skills they need to be as independent as possible, everyone will help you. Sometimes you don't even have to ask. People will always help you. One of my original dreams or visions that the center would come to be recognized as a real leader and contributor in the field of autism education and research and that it would live hundreds of years beyond me for as long as it was needed and be successful and productive and continue to grow. These kids should have the best quality education and physical plant as any child. And if you want to help people with autism and their families and friends and others around the world who have it, then this is certainly one of the finest places to, to do it because it will have impact everywhere. <laughs>